best of the 11 have experienced national team football at different age levels. Paul Trimboli is in great touch. Jim Pergoglio sees him as a main player in today's big game against Morwell Falcons. And of course, Trimboli eager to win back a place in the Socceroo lineup. Newly promoted Morwell Falcons have had a great start to their inaugural season in the Coca Cola Soccer League. The most familiar names to Australian soccer fans are number 10 Billy Wright, the New Zealand international, and former Sunshine George Cross midfielder John Waddell. Perhaps today's game is Morwell's moment of truth. Zoran Markovsky is the first cousin of the well known John Markovsky. He celebrated his 20th birthday this week. Just over a year ago, he was playing reserve team football in the Victorian State League and he's having a great season for Morwell Falcons. 49-year-old Dennis Vatsinas is the man in the middle today in charge of the battle between South Melbourne against Morwell Falcons. And what a big game it promises to be. Morwell Falcons would have dreamt of playing a team like this. Just a couple of seasons ago, of course, they were propelled into the Coca-Cola Soccer League one year ahead of schedule. And they've really done extremely well with seven points from the first five games. And Dennis Vatsinas, 49 years of age, he's been officiating in the Coca-Cola Soccer League since 1980. And today he's the man in the middle as Billy Wright has the first touch for Morwell Falcons. And the new team, the new boys on the block, have certainly done extremely well. Well, you could say they were written off in pre-season calculations because they didn't have as much time as other sides to prepare for the, the, uh, the Coca-Cola Soccer League when we recall that Arpia were forced out in the end as Anthony Kasser gets the ball away. And Anthony Kasser, more known, you could say, for outdoor football, uh, indoor football rather than outdoor football, representing Australia as an indoor soccer player. And as this match unfolds, you'll be quite impressed with uh, some of the talents of these more world players. As number six, Adrian Pender, gets the ball inside for the youngster, Kassa, and already searching long and hard for Billy Wright, but no chance at all there for the Kiwi International. And Billy Wright has played 40 internationals for New Zealand after uh, coming across from the UK. And Danny Wright, who's uh, playing in the left fullback position, at the moment, as there was a bit of a push, well spotted by referee Dennis Lutzinas, the telecommunications officer. And South Melbourne founded in 1948. They've won the NSL in 84, 91, cup winners in 1990, as against Moore Falcons, who were founded in 61. Three years ago, they lost actually a promotion playoff to Brisbane City, who in turn lost to West Adelaide. And Morwell have been in good form in the Victorian State League, twice winners in the last four years, as Gary Hasler gets a nice ball across, missed by everyone, including the tall centre, uh, centre back there and Andrew Thorpe. But Paul Wade, you'll expect to see him coming in deep from the set pieces and those uh, high crosses from the flanks. And it really uh, promises to be interesting for us in particular, John, because we haven't seen Morwell Falcons on Match of the Day this year. We've heard quite a lot about them. We know that they're a new side. We know that only four players played uh, with Morwell. It's a new side. They uh, played, obviously, in the Victorian State League, so it's a new-look side, and uh, it's a real test for a lot of the younger players in the team. Well, it's a good situation to be in, Andy, because they, they have really nothing to lose. They've come in, no one expected anything from them. I think it's a bit of a honeymoon, the first season in the league. You play without a lot more pressure, and they've done that so far. And who's to say that uh, today that they can't go even one step further? But uh, as you said earlier, a real test for them today. This is uh, probably the biggest test they've had so far against the South Melbourne side, who was a little bit hungry for points. They uh, really haven't put it together so far this year. Well, Bobby McLaughlin was telling me before the game it's a, a dream come true. Uh, who would have thought they'd be playing South Melbourne as Andrew Thorpe was in amongst it. And it looked like for one brief moment he might have had a shot on target. But good play by Thorpe as Butzianis comes across to clear the ball away. And Zoran Markovsky will uh, take the throw in. There's Jim Pergolios. The man who was assistant to Pushkas for three years is in charge of the team now as Wright clears it away. Trimboli and Pender chasing. And Paul Harris. The sweeper just leaving it for Zoran Markovsky. He was hoping for Sasha Bechanovsky, Jurakovic and Bechanovsky. And good work by the Socceroos. Kasser came through, good clearance away by Jurakovic. And Wade was taken late by Pender. 
And the referee right on the spot there. He wants uh, Peterson to wait till he's ready for the free kick. And there it is for Waratifi. Andrew Thorpe on his back. Now it's with Pender. Anthony Kassa, a local product of Morwell. Well, you talk about experience. Naturally enough, only one player in this Morwell Falcons team has played more than 30 or 40 uh, matches in the Coca-Cola Soccer League. It's John Waddell as Butzianis is leading a bit of a merry dance in that box and it was just cleared away by Della Rocca and back again with Della Rocca composure at the back a good sign for Morwell they didn't really hit the panic stations there John no very composed Andy the reports we had is that they play it very quickly from the back but from what we've seen so far they're putting the ball on the ground and really pushing the ball about and Russell Black with a searching ball for Kassa Danny Wright right on his back and there was really no other option but for uh, Kassa to try and win a corner or a throw-in because there was no support. And Jim Pergolios just looking on. A familiar uh, facial expression from the former South Melbourne player. As Markovsky takes the train, looking for Waddell. Up was Blair. Now Peterson, a soccer playmaker. A beautiful ball for Butzianis. That's some ball from Mike Peterson. Butzianis looks up. Good covering walk, work from Paul Harris. And Con Butzianis, they used to call him super sub, but he'll be causing them some bother down that left, as Harris has already found out. Just over five minutes in. No scorers yet here at Middle Park. And there's been no uh, save to make from either keeper. Mortone. Gee, he's having a great season too. Looking for Wade again. The shot by Butzianis. What a move from South Melbourne. You've got to expect that from this side. And Butzianis doing very well indeed, John. Yes, and also uh, Paul Wade, of course, the flick on from Wade. Excellent long throw from Hasler. Look at this flick on from Paul Wade. And a nice volley from uh, Butzianis. Just needed to be over a little bit more, Andy, and that was in the back of the net. Keeping his eye on it. Good header away. Haven't seen too much of a Waratifi as yet. Now the back pass rule. That's well played, Bormotone. Into the wind, as you noticed. It's been really a, a tentative start from both teams, John. It hasn't really been an open game. They're both really cat and mouse, you could say. They're both trying to test each other's uh, strengths or weaknesses. Hasler. Hard, but it didn't come off for him this time. Musket, too long, away by Paul Harris. Luciannis, he went down, it's with the Waratifi, they're looking up, there's three players there, it's with Hasler, and it went straight into Butzianis's legs, I think. Well, it could have fallen for anyone there, and perhaps you put that down, John, as the uh, the first clear-cut chance, I would have to say. It was an excellent play from Waratifi, very unselfish to, to lay the ball back. Hasler's shot was just one of those that uh, could have gone anywhere, there was just so many legs in there, it was almost impossible to get through. You're saying South Melbourne, perhaps a little bit tentative, Andy. I think they're, they're under a lot of pressure. They're a, a club that expects success. They've, they have a, a heaps of quality players with international experience. And the fact that the results haven't been there so far this year, of course, does affect their confidence. And Mortone coming out, and he'll regather. Gee, that was a tough one for the keeper. Did extremely well to recover from that Mike Peterson corner. And Mortone... Uh, they played with the Joeys in 86, as I mentioned earlier, with the uh, Holly Roos squad in their formative years. And also George Stintz at Blacktown and Parramatta Eagles was also at the Institute of Sport. So certainly had a lot of experience, but not that much in the Coca-Cola Soccer League. Peterson, he's got Hasler free. Here's the opportunity for South Melbourne, but he sprays it wide. Well, it was easier perhaps to score than a miss for Gary Hasler. And that was a great chance for South Melbourne to draw first blood here at Middle Park. 60 minutes in. The chance of the match, but excellent refereeing uh, there to allow the advantage on. There was a foul on Warren Seat. What an excellent ball through. This is Gary. He'll uh, he'll uh, kill himself for missing that. That was one he should have put away, and he knows better than most. 
but they're the type of chances that South Melbourne need to take uh, Andy to get that confidence back. And more will the type of opponent you've really got to put away as early as possible. Because the longer the game goes on, the more their, their uh, fighting spirit and determination to get something out of the game is going to increase. Well, more will come into this game, of course. They've got nothing to lose. They're playing against a team with uh, such a, a bigger and uh, stronger reputation, experience-wise, naturally enough. And more will traditionally have been slow starters in their games this season, but they've really picked up the tempo in the second half. And the longer this first half goes on where they can hold South Melbourne out, they'll be obviously lifted in spirit and confidence, and they have the job ahead of them. The pressure right on. Butzianis will take the corner kick. Wade has made the run to the near post. In it comes, the not off the goal. There it is. Trimboli the scorer. unselfish player in the Coca-Cola Soccer League. He scores his 51st goal from the set piece. Well, a goal of class, Andy. Trimboli using uh, the angle so well just to glance at him, but he meant skill in at the curving corner. And uh, Bobby McLaughlin of uh, Moore will be angry with his defence there because Trimboli left able to get a free go out of one of the smallest players on the field. But uh, an excellent goal from Paul in Trimboli, one of real class. Pender is having a busy day. Great steal by Trimboli. There's the ball for Butzianis and Markovsky chasing. Good tackle from Zoran Markovsky. Some claims of a penalty, but in my eyes, certainly a, a very, very effective challenge. And Butzianis comes back and shows that he can do the job too. 20 minutes up in this... Coca-Cola Soccer League match of the day. As you can see, the camera's bouncing here. The wind very strong indeed. And right down the throat of Mortone, that wind. Wade and Modell are having an interesting day with the aerial work. And there's the second. Francis Alontifi, the flamboyant man who joined this club from Melbourne CSC. He scores his third goal of the season for his new club. Exploited by uh, South Melbourne, Francis breaks it through, a nice lob over the top. But a real criticism on what we've seen in this first 20 minutes or more is that they are so square at the back that South Melbourne's experience in the putt through passes, catching them out all the time. None better illustrated than this goal here. Jurakovic. The switch, right. Danny Wright, I should say Billy Wright, right on his back. And again, Markovsky and Butzianis. Back for Hasler. And a lovely ball down the line for Danny Wright. Now Butzianis, Awaratifi. The control just letting him down. And uh, Danny Wright winning out this time. The ball inside. The shot by Butzianis was blocked. It looked like a corner. The flag was up, though, on that far side. And it must be offside, I would think. Yes, Dennis Vatsun is signalling. Good perseverance here from Danny Wright, John. Yeah, it's starting to happen for South Melbourne now. The confidence of two goals up. They're starting to string the passes together. And that was one move that could well have ended in another goal for all, all South Melbourne at this stage, Andy. One goal will uh, lead, gives you confidence. Two, uh, you start to grow wings. And that's the case for South Melbourne at this stage of the match. Muscat just watches that header from Thorpe.
He'll be doing that too. Although Mike Peterson uh, might go for the, uh, the top corner, the curler. 38 minutes of normal time. Djurakovic, it is Djurakovic into the wall though. Peterson stabbing it on. Flags up just to Trimboli just caught offside. Isn't it great to see Paul Trimboli passing on some advice? to the younger uh, Kombutsianis. Well, that's questionable, that offside. Yes, yeah. I, I thought uh, uh, it was a touch and go. Ball from Mickey P. Naturally enough, Eugene Brazali was uh, right in line there, but... Uh, I don't know if they play the same policy as cricket where you give the benefit of the doubt to the batsman or the defending team. Well, uh, we, we talk about this a lot, don't we? It should always, uh, I believe, go to the attacking towards the attacker. I think too much we give always in marginal decisions we give it to the defending side, whether that's offside or foul, when it, in fact it should be the other way. Here's the chance for Bichanovsky. And still the ball will stay in. Hasler. Just hooking it away for Butzianis. Markovsky is on his back. And it will be a uh, South Melbourne throw-in. Trimboli. I didn't think that was a foul either. Pender was the man. And some of these challenges. Very, very committed indeed. Hasler. Well, probably, well, I thought he would have been better off leaving it for uh, Danny Wright. the ball for Waratifi, away by Della Rocca. Wade, the touch on, the one for Butzianis, Morton and Butzianis. Morton, very, very quick off the line. Five minutes left in this first half. Had a couple of minutes for stoppages. Musket in there again. Waratifi and Harris. Now Thorpe. Lucianis, he might, no, not this time. Just thought for one brief moment he might have tried the shot. The move breaks down, it's with Kassa. But Janowski, he should get there first. Now Penda, Bechanovsky can't keep it in. <laughs> Stephen Blair's had a pretty uh, quiet day. The centre defence of Blair and Djurakovic really haven't had that much to do, John. I think it just indicates how much South Melbourne been on top, Andy. There's been very little pressure from Moore. Maybe that will change second half with a slight cross breeze. Not a strong breeze in their favour, but the cross breeze might suit Moore better. But at this stage, neither of they nor goalkeeper McLaren really have been tested. Good play here from South Melbourne, although Butzianis' has just last touch didn't come off and the clearance was always going to be difficult for Billy Wright. Not a bad crowd here at Middle Park, I must admit. I'd Probably say around 5,000, between four and five. And they're seeing a very good performance from their team, South Melbourne. The leaders by two goals to nil. Just on three minutes of normal time left, Blair. Mutianis, this time Markovsky comes away. He looks up. Searching ball for right. Good work from McLaren. Played the sweeper. And in the end, Musket just a desperate clearance away. Good sign for Morwell. The ball inside for Waddell. Good interception from Peterson. Now Trimboli, they've got support on the left. Hasler. He's got Butzianis on the left if he wants him. There's the ball for Butzianis. Awaratifi's inside. He's going to chip Morton off the bar. And I think it took a touch and cleared away in the end by Della Rocca. Intelligent play. G South Melbourne are playing some good football here, John. Well, an excellent.
excellent move from South Melbourne, finishing with this uh, very clever bit from uh, Butzianis. Tony gets a gets a hand on it, Andy. Uh, that will be one for the save of the week. But their goal there and coming just before half time really would have been the end of the match. And another corner. Stephen Blair was the man who had won the corner for his team. Well, Con Butianis coming ever so close. Butianis, oh, Peterson's free at the edge of the box. Mortone takes that ever so well. And this 22-year-old keeper certainly having a busy day today. header for Butzianis. Now the support's coming through. Butzianis, great run. This is some run from Butzianis. And the shot was just blocked by Harris Mortone. And it spins away. And now the chance in front. And missed by the Socceroo, Mike Peterson. And John, that should have been three. Well, it should have been. And he started with Paul Wade winning the ball. Excellent pass. Butzianis dribbling two. The shot and look at the spin on this good play from Warren he backs in and keeps the defender away and I would think that the spin had a lot to do with that Andy that's just spinning a little bit too much for Mickey P to get over yes, and control I, it enough I must apologize to uh, Mike Peterson there because uh, you'll see here this is probably it's a, a wicked angle, spin on it look and he was under pressure too and you've got to commend uh, Morwell's defense and to be quite honest with you if South Melbourne scored that would have been the ball game Still, Moore will have a bit of a sniff. They are down two. They can grab one back here. It will make for an interesting second half. The South Melbourne defence have stood firm. It's with Adrian Pender. He's looking long for Anthony Kassa. Great work from Kassa. Djurakovic. And uh, the referee claims a dive, although Kassa is down for the count. Winner stoppages stoppages at the moment well John on replay that was an interesting one too well uh, in live Andy it looked a fair challenge but uh, replay did appear a little bit late didn't it? Yeah, it certainly did I must uh... well, there, there weren't too many complaints from the more World players Kassa uh, my initial impression I thought might have uh, taken a bit of a dive uh, well, the important thing is, he's back on his feet. Let's have a look here. Well, that's in, that's that's a foul. That, and I tell you what, they've. Uh... Well, it tells you what good referees we make, doesn't it, Andy? Because <laughs> that first incident, nothing wrong at all. But uh, the more you see it, the more you you tend to think that it was a penalty. Jeez. And, well, we're into stoppages, and if they had the penalty, and they pull one back as they have done against uh, a few teams this year. It really would have made for an interesting second half. There's such a thing as a bad score to lead by, it's 2-0, because uh, the other team peg one back, suddenly you, you, you've got to get in top gear again, and for South Melbourne to put them away, they obviously need the other goal. But while it still remains 2-0, more will limit the chance. And Betchanovsky get back right to 2-1, and yep. uh, suddenly it's a different ball game. Sasha Betchanovsky, uh, incidentally, he was in the Australian youth squad, and just missed the cut for Portugal last year. A little bit lucky that they uh, didn't escape but in the end there. The way for the second half, South Melbourne running from the left to the right-hand side of your screen. They're leading this game two goals to nil. And there has been one change made by uh, Morwell Falcons. It appears that the number seven, Russell Black, has come off and he's been replaced by the number 12, Gary McMullen. As Billy Wright is in possession, he finds Kassa. McMullen is playing as a target man at the moment. Waddell lines it up, but good block from Blair. And that's not a bad uh, attempt from some 45 metres from Paul Harris. But the change being made, black off. Extra forward on Andy. Indicates uh, what Bobby McLaughlin's going to do in the second half, and from that shot indicates what Moore will hope to do. They've really got to have a go for it now. Two down. No time to lose. Put on the extra forward and try and use the win to their advantage. And Morwell Falcons, their first season in the Coca-Cola Soccer.
Soccer League. They started it with a bang indeed, beating Sydney Olympic 2-0. They lost away to Brisbane 3-0. And then uh, they did well at home against Wollongong City, drawing 2-2 there. And they lost away to West Adelaide 2-1, although they played extremely well in that second half. But last week they beat Sydney CSC 2-0. South Melbourne started with a 2-1 win over Sydney CSC. They lost 3-0 away to West Adelaide. Then they lost away again to Marconi 2-1. Drew with Preston 1-1 and uh, perhaps their best performance of the season last week in the fifth round of the Coca-Cola Soccer League, a 2-0 defeat of Newcastle. There's yet another stoppage and, uh, well, the South Melbourne boys aren't uh, happy with the outcome there with Musket on the ground. And Billy White was in the thick of it. Kevin Musket. The young man who will be playing in his second World Youth Championship next year. Waddell is the man who will take the free kick. And that's hooked away by Blair. As Andrew Thorpe was the player from Orwell coming in and a bit of a sigh across the, the ground here and uh, a lot of the spectators have now started to congregate behind the Morwell's goal. And this time, though, it's Morwell. We're right in there. In comes the corner, too deep. Bechanovsky will keep it in. And he couldn't get it back for Thorpe as Hasler cleared it away. Here's Zoran Markovsky and, well, Gary Hasler is certainly having a great day, a great first half, and it... He's doing the same thing in the second. Although, John, I've already noticed Morwell have picked up the tempo. They have to. They've been really left with no other option. They've got to get an early goal. Well, their tactical formation indicates that, and I'm sure Bobby McLaughlin at half-time would have really got into them. It wasn't a good first half for them. It's uh, now 40, 40 or 45 minutes of all or nothing for them. Again, I think the first season, Andy, the team has nothing to lose. People don't expect a lot of you. And I must say, in the first half, I did expect more from them. I thought they would have made life a little bit more difficult uh, than they did for South Melbourne. But it's a better start for them second half. Wade trying to release Awara Tifi. Harris's clearance deflects favourably for De La Roca. The sweeper Harris looks up. Chinovsky. Right. Now look at the support for South Melbourne. Butzianis or Hasler? It's now with Hasler. And the Socceroo hoping for a Waratifi. Andrew Thorpe. Nice turn. Right. And Musket. And the youngster does the job over the veteran. Yes, uh, the referee pulling up uh, Waddell. Just a bit of a late challenge. Might have been a bookable offence, but... Musket, uh, no bother. <laughs> Musket trying to steal some uh, yards. Billy Wright's not going to give him the ball. And the referee this time tells... I tell you what, uh, for a young player... Musket is playing like a mature veteran. All the tricks of the trade. And he cuts back in this time on right. He might try it from, for himself. Oh, I really, uh, John, you, I tell you what, they're, they're, they're unselfish today, the South Melbourne boys, when they're in ideal situations to, to perhaps uh, try a long range attempt. But this time it's more well. Can they do something here? No, they can't. The substitute, Gary McMullen. He joined Morwell in 86 from Altona Gate in the Victorian State League. But uh, just back on that other aspect of South Melbourne's play, nine times out of ten, other teams would uh, go for a shot. Well, Kevin actually scored one from that range in uh, Venezuela, an excellent goal uh, against Venezuela, in fact. But uh, sometimes you can be a bit too unselfish, Andy. I thought the shot was on there.
Kowalski again for Harris. And this new side of Morwell Falcons, only really four players in this squad uh, had played in the club in the Victorian State League, although Matone came uh, for ten games in the second round and got to pay them credit where it's due. They've really done it the hard way. They're down two by two goals. Warratif inside and Trimboli against the post. Here's Wade now. Deflection. Morton will gather that one in and you can't get much closer than that, John. No, an incisive move by South Melbourne. The, the ball from Warratif, the perfect, perfect to the near post. Uh, Trimboli coming in just skews it. A little bit unlucky. Quality stop from South Melbourne. But of course, uh, is the scenario here, Andy, that uh, as more will push, uh, they're going to be caught uh, on the break. That's uh, facts of life. With the likes of uh, Waratifi, Trimboli, Butzianis uh, catching her out at the other end is not a good prospect. But more will are going to lose no friends by having a go at this stage of the match. Markovsky, a long throw for Waddell. Up was Wade. Wright went in, well the two Wrights did, and it was Danny Wright. Who's had a found Wade, and it's now with Muskets. Waratifi, De La Roca, right on him. Waratifi gets away from the sweeper, Harris, and a lovely ball inside. But Giannis is free, that's it, and a save of excellence from Steve Mortone. And Con Giannis could have got onto the scorer's sheet, but there was a man there to thwart him. Well, another first-class move. South Melbourne now starting to get their rhythm. It's a Waratifi involved again. It's, it's a tremendous cross, nice and deep. And a splinter header puts the Arnis over it, gets it down. But what a great save from the tone. We saw him make about half a dozen last week, and he's got about three or four here today. And two of them uh, really save of the week category, including that one. Across to Waddell. Ken Moore will get back into this game. Desperately needing the goal. In comes the cross from right. A deep one. Pechanovsky's up. Did it take a touch off South Melbourne? Yes. Eugene Brazale signalled. And Dennis Fritzinas. The referee follows that lead. Ender inside. Peterson. Now Musket. Only two front runners up there at the moment as Pender blocked that uh, clearance. And has to leave it for Danny Wright. Markovsky getting ahead of Butsianis. Durakovic gets a second bite. Kassa couldn't get it to Waddell. Tiffy taken just a tad, uh, tad late. Peterson looks up. A good, good work because Jurakovic is there for South Melbourne. There's the ball inside. It was almost for Warren Tiffy. Still might be there for him. It is. Jurakovic calling for the ball. He gets it back inside. Trimbal. He tried hard and it was just cleared away still. Oh, Warren Tiffy. Now Jurakovic. And they're really toiling and toiling. Well, in the end, it goes out for a... Hey, there's a smile. A sort of smile, John. Jim Bagolius must be impressed. Well, he would be, particularly with the Waratidis having an excellent second half. More, uh, more involved, but more room to move. Creating havoc, particularly down this right flank where so many of uh, South Melbourne's moves are coming and they're nearly all involving a Waratidi. Blair, he was under pressure from McMullen. Now, Kassa, he's a chance for more. Well, Bechanovsky, they're looking for McMullen, and Wade was there to cover for South Melbourne. If there was ever going to be a chance in this half, it looked like it could have been there for Morwell. And Thorpe keeps his cool. Will they be inspired by that move? Waddell looking for Billy Wright. Jurakovic is coming over, and he's cleared it out of the ground. Well, more were all fighting hard. They're hanging in there. You've got to pay them credit there. That was a good move, John. And there's 
the skyline from our vantage point here at Middle Park, and hopefully those clouds won't darken. Let's, let's hope those clouds will not darken as the second half goes on. Musket there at the near post. Trimboli, beautiful control. A lesson again for the youngsters watching. Wade, Harris, right on his back. And that was effective. A beautiful looking ball. McMullen's having a busy second half. And instead of giving away the goal kick, gives away the, uh, the throw. But Gary McMullen. Born in Liverpool. Bit of climbing from Andrew Thorpe. And six of the Morwell players are based at Morwell, which is about a two-hour drive uh, out of Melbourne. And there's a couple of carloads that head off to, to training each week. The opportunity to play in the premier soccer competition in Australia. As Kessa, that's not a bad effort at all from Anthony Kessa. And in the past, I've seen Anthony play in the National Indoor Soccer League, and he's put away some good goals in that competition. But again, more getting back into the game, John. Well, they're still alive, Andy. Uh, that's the, the state of play, if we like. But uh, there's always a chance they can to get one back. And uh, once that happens, or should it happen, of course, it's a different ball game. South Melbourne, in the meantime, enough opportunities at the other end to really sew the game up. I think there's no doubt they've been uh, the superior side today. But the game's still alive. I think the move of, uh, of McMullen in front and putting right uh, further out has really worked well for Moore. Billy Wright gets the ball, anything's possible. And anything's possible with Trimboli too. Could have been his second. Gee, he's worked hard for it. Again, the skills of the... Well, I don't like to call him an ex soccer because I think he should be uh, in that squad. Trimboli has already scored today, and he's come ever so close there. Hasler. Scored nine goals in the Coca-Cola Soccer League. Will it be number 10 for Hasler? Unselfishly inside again, and a Warren Tiffy had time to run. Well... Wrongly, you could say, John, because really a Waratifi should have been in a position to slot that away. Well, it was a brilliant run, and he uh, did all the hard work. I don't think the angle was there for him to shoot, and hence uh, to cut his back was the right uh, the right option. But the beauty of Gary Hasler, an excellent run, very forceful, very direct. A Butziana's corner. And there's the header, and hooked away. It would have gone for a corner as it deflected from De La Rocca. Stephen Blair went up for it. Butzianis looks up. Trimboli called for it, but it goes for Peterson. Now Butzianis, can, can he get around Casa? Casa's pretty nippy too. Oh, jeez. I thought that. That had to be a yellow, and Wade is down. Yeah, I think I would have buried a hole and dived into that. But uh, it takes a bit more than that to uh, force Paul Wade out of a game. Now, Hasler's calling for it deep. It's going for Butzianis. It was away from Della Rocca and Kessler getting in with Hasler. The switch didn't come off. Right, musket there first. There's one for Waratifi, De La Rocca, well, was there a push? No, says the referee. Trimboli, will he try and curl it? He does! And Paul Trimboli again coming in close. South Melbourne are playing delightful football here at Middle Park, and the fans will be loving it, no doubt. A beautiful skill from Trimboli. Look, he sends everyone the wrong way by the turn, then the curl. With a bit of luck, he could have had a hat-trick so far today, Andy. No way. Warren Tiffy wants it. Durakovic, though, has it. He'll go himself, Durakovic. Great run. What a shot from Durakovic, too. Gee, Mehmet Durakovic, we've rarely seen him come forward because there's been so many good attacking players. 
chase from the other players today, John, but that was a, a great run. The vintage uh, Djurakovic when he comes forward, beating opponents, and, and this shot's not that far wide. Tried to get a bend on it. What a beautiful, strong run. Takes the opponents on, runs into the box, runs at the defender. And one of the big pluses of Djurakovic as uh, the last man of the defence is that he can do those types of things in attack. Peterson. Trimboli, good steal though from Penda. Odell looking for Bechanovsky. And the referee has pulled up Kevin Musket. I thought it was maybe shoulder to shoulder, and he's giving him a yellow. I'm a little bit surprised with that, John. Yeah, if any, I thought it uh, may have even been inside the area. Yes, if well, if it is a foul, uh, that should be a penalty. <laughs> and that's what the more players complaining about. Here we are here. surprised on that one that was well, a strange one because he's given a yellow and it looked it might have been just inside the box if there was the foul in the referee's eyes of course it was and uh, I must say one thing though Dennis would see has uh, had a great game today a very good game as a quickly taken free kick was ever so close and that really is the ball game they needed a goal there there's just on two and a half minutes of normal time and all of a sudden the wind has picked up, the dark clouds are looming and the thunderstorms are not too far away. Again Harris to Bechanovsky. Up. Just blocked by Musket. Excuse me, rather. Musket it was, but Peterson finds now Hasler. He's a good direct runner. He's got Butzianis free. Finds a Waratifi this time. And back for Butzianis. Plenty of support inside that box. And, um, well, I'm surprised. And so is everyone here at Middle Park with that cross from Butzianis. Waddell. Pechanovsky and a across to Anthony Kassa. Pechanovsky could head her on for McMullen. Djurakovic under extreme pressure. In went McMullen and Musket. The referee waves play on. Tromboli can break away from four. And just not enough behind it for a Waratifi. up and saw Thorpe free. Good ball for him. At the moment Musket is down. I'd say it's from that earlier challenge and while there is a that break, just another reminder, I know that uh, Les mentioned at half time the cup games begin this week. The League Cup will kick off this Wednesday a week earlier than originally announced. Two matches, Newcastle at home to Parramatta Eagles at Mitre 10 Stadium and Marconi entertained Wollongong at Marconi. And the League Cup is a new format this year. The first two rounds are played on a home and away basis and that's really great to see that we're falling in line with other competitions all around the world. Well, particularly when you get uh, the Derby games like the two Adelaides uh, playing twice. Big crowds and uh, does extend the form out of the cup rather than just a knockout or straight into quarterfinals if you have the buy in the first round. So it is an improvement. I still would like to see it, uh, Andy, expanded even to involve all uh, teams or from throughout Australia, not just the NSL teams themselves. Now McMullen. And it was a very, very typical back heeler for Castle Control. A much better second half from both sides. The game itself better in all, all respects in the second half. South Melbourne, one could argue, should have won this match by more. But more will have hung in there and always the possibility they'd pull something back. They shouldn't be disappointed, uh, except those two uh, getting caught square at the back so often in the first half really was their downfall. But for South Melbourne, signs that they're on the way back. This win will put them well up the table. And uh, enough going for them to suggest that uh, come the end of the year, South Melbourne are going to be there among those six. Well, there was claims there of a handball. Did look like a handball, Andy. Fans. And the referee must have thought it wasn't uh, an intentional one. 
Kassa. Good control from him. This is a nice move. Pender. Oh. It comes to nothing in the end. And more Falcons. They'll learn from the experience here playing a team of unlimited class and ability in South Melbourne, of course. They were touted as the title favourites. They're back on the right track. They still, I think, can improve on this performance. They've really got to take their chances because when they come up against uh, other sides in a league, they'll know that the uh, half chances have to be taken. Although in saying that, they can, of course, take heart from this performance. They've played, played some great football. They scored two good goals, and of course, they've struck the woodwork twice. And Mortone has pulled off two brilliant saves as well. So it really could have been six or seven. Two minutes into injury time, and there, in fact, is the full time whistle. South Melbourne again. They continue their unbeaten run that stretches now to three games. And Paul Trimboli, an outstanding game for him today. He scored the first goal in the 17th minute. Could have grabbed a hat trick in this one as well. But he'll be happy with his performance. South Melbourne victors here at Middle Park by two goals to nil. And let's cross now to Les Murray. Thanks, Andy. And with me is South Melbourne striker Con Butzianis, who had a pretty good game today, as, as did the rest of the South Melbourne side, Con. Now, we'll talk about your performance in a second, but the team, I thought, had a lot of rhythm today. It looked very impressive, but it should have been and could have been a lot more goals, couldn't it? Yeah, well, I thought we could have scored at least five or six in the end. 